SCRAP stands for Satellite Contact Report Analysis and Prediction. SCRAP is a software analysis tool that was originally designed for the amateur radio community, but has other applications as well in the educational area. SCRAP consists of a primary page here that allows you to set up the initialization, the 3D earth control, identify your ground station, a simulation uh, page, a, an ephemeris viewing page here, a two-line orbital ephemeris editor, an ability to produce pass reports, an APRS page, amateur uh, packet reporting system, there's a multi-track page that uh, displays the current passes and predicted passes. There's an astronomical page here that displays look angles to the various planets in our solar system. There's a conjunction page here that allows you to uh, identify conjunctions between satellites. Conjunctions are uh, sightings from one satellite to other satellites, line of sight without uh, the Earth being in the way or Earth obscura. There's an RF interfacing, RFI interference page that allows you to identify uh, those satellites that are in close proximity from your ground station that could be interfering with each other. And it also supports up to four independent simultaneous antenna controllers that allows you to control your antenna rotor controller real time. Now that you've installed Scrap on your computer, one of the first things you want to do is update the uh, ephemeris database uh, within Scrap. This is done from the initialize page. This is actually pretty easy. Uh, we have a preloaded script that will download most of the satellites you'll ever be interested in. Just simply press download TLE files and it will connect to the internet and download thousands of satellites. So here we go. And when we're finished, you'll see the uh, scrolling uh, stop, and you'll see the uh, downloading stop as well. Now, next thing you want to do, we've just finished downloading uh, 31 uh, ephemeris files. Next thing you want to do is, you see up here, we got the uh, amateur TLE. Uh, we want to update that database, so we'll just load the TLE file. We'll press on Load TLE, double-click on Amateur TLE. And now we have just or updated the amateur TLE file within our uh, scrap uh, system, and we're good to go. Scrap also has a feature where we can uh, not only go through the tabs and look at the various uh, windows, but if we go over here to the, uh, the view dropdown, we can open up separate standalone windows for uh, for multi-track. The ephemeris display. Look at the ephemeris data, and also the conjunctions page. Okay, so here we are, starting up with uh, scrap, beginning at rise. We can see over here that the uh, elevation, azimuth, are starting to change. We're 10 seconds into the pass. We've got the rise set threshold set at 10 degrees. We still haven't uh, started to transmit any data yet. Data won't transmit until the elevation uh, changes to uh, 10 degrees elevation. <coughs> I've got an application up here that's set up to a null modem uh, cable. As soon as the uh, data starts transmitting, when ISS uh, comes into view, we'll start to see the serial data come through. Now the way I've got 
got this configured is the uh, application up top here is connected up to COM3. Scrap is connected up to COM4. We've enabled the COM port, but no data starts transmitting. It actually doesn't do the serial connection until we uh, receive acquisition at 10 degrees. <coughs> threshold here at 10 degrees can be user specified prior to uh, the initiation of a contact and uh, starting you know the uh, communications part of it. The reason I chose 10 degrees is it was uh, high enough above the horizon that for most smaller antenna systems uh, uh, they might not be capable of receiving ISS until it might even get higher. Okay so we've actually got up to acquisition We're starting to see data uh, appearing up on the top here. Go check my settings on here, COM3. Oh, guess what? We go change that to uh, from BOTO to ASCII, and we can see here that the uh, we're starting to uh, uh, transmit data over the COM port. And the counter here is actually incrementing it once a second. The way this is set up is uh, if there's a, uh, a change in, in the data, it will actually transmit once a second. And we can change the precision here, at this point here, to uh, fractional precisions, which only work for the default as an L protocol. If you go to the ASU controller, we can see what happens over here and we change that. It goes to the uh, W command, W as L, as opposed to the uh, default, which is as azimuth, uh, number, 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 dot decimal, L, number, number, dot decimal. And you can see we're into the contact right now. Elevation is at 21 degrees. And the antenna has changed from uh, rise to acquisition, now to contact. Okay, now that uh, we've passed through the middle of the pass, we're getting towards the end. The elevation has dropped down to uh, 12, 11, 10 degrees. We'll see that the uh, tracking antenna here is going to transition to a loss of signal. Uh, the red box appears here indicating that, uh, hey, you're getting ready for things to uh, shut down and the tracking to stop. We've now gone into fade because the elevation has dropped below 10 degrees. and we've stopped transmitting antenna control data to the uh, rotors. So if you want to make sure that uh, you can communicate at the lower elevations, you can change the threshold here again from 10 degrees down to 0 degrees elevation and you could go horizon to horizon. So that's pretty much it. This is a demonstration of how uh, scrap can be used for uh, up to uh, four uh, different uh, antenna controllers uh, simultaneously and we can display the pass real time and also uh, display down here the frequency, frequency phase path uh, loss information for uh, tuning uh, uh, any receivers that you're using uh, for uh, the contact.